Hello there. Thank you for joining me here on another session of the Oakland Tales. I'm here again to tell you about my friend the Black Elk, Bruce Breland, and his adventures in what is now known as male art. No, that's not boy or girl art. It's male art, like in postage, postage things. Sending stuff by the mail. We're talking about a time of maybe 1973, something like that, 72, 73, when the Black Elk asked me to mail him a letter, an art letter. It was a plastic bag. It was one of them Ziploc bags. He liked them bags. And he put a tag on it with a stamp and an address, and he sent something to somebody. And since I was all dressed up wearing that monkey suit, he wanted me to put it in the post office box so that he could take my picture and document this event. The Black Elk thinking that this was an important thing to do. And so I was very pleased to do this for the Black Elk. Him being a big professor at a prestigious university, Carnegie Mellon University, I was right proud that he asked me to join him, just a lowly person. And so we done this thing. I really didn't know what was going on too much there. But it was followed up by him putting a white column, a kind of pedestal, in the art building. On the third floor of the art department, as you get out the elevator, those of you that know Carnegie Mellon would know what I'm talking about. And on this pedestal, he put a shoe boot. Now, a shoe boot was one of them boots that ladies used to wear. It had a heel on it, like a high heel, but it was a boot, and it was only ankle high, and it had fur around the top. Funky-looking things. Well, the Black Elk was asked why he'd done such a thing, and he said, well, everybody else was having shows, and so he thought he should have a big shoe. And so that's what he said, and put it out there. Now, in a little time, a great big box came in to Carnegie Mellon University addressed to the Black Elk. And it was full of mail art. It was one of the first mail art shows being sent around. When a person says something like it was the first one, who the hell would know what that means? But it was early on in the going, the Black Elk being a great innovator. And, and so we opened this box, and it was full of stuff. Some of it was serious, some of it was jokes. It was kind of fun. One was just an envelope with foam rubber inside. I made everyone laugh. I laughed. I liked that one the best, actually. And so we, uh, we added some things to the box and sent it on to somebody else so that they could receive some mail art. And so that's the kind of things that we was doing. And we knew that the uh, relationship, let us say, between communication and art was growing, growing fast during those periods of the time and the Black Elk was all over this particular area of adventure. And so uh, that kind of thing led to uh, me uh, going to a, a mailbox on, on a particular day with the Black Elk. It was a nice day. And um, I was dressed up, and you got it. When I dropped that letter in the post office, he, uh, he, he snapped my picture. That's right, with that Polaroid camera. And he, uh, he did a camera, uh, a shot for himself, and he gave one for me. That's the way the Black Elk done it. So we had a very, very nice time that day. And then years later... I would say 10 years later, I came back into Carnegie Mellon University, and this mail art thing had grown a bit. Now, the Black Elk was into truck driver, CB radio, around the time that he was into mail art. And then the mail art, with the, the development of telecommunication devices, had expanded. And I, I uh, was an invitee to a group called the DAX Group, D-A-X, Digital Art Exchange. And uh, the Black Elk was sending things long distance then by computers. Now, this is a long time before email and all that stuff. The DAX Group had artists and scientists working together, finding out what was going on. 
1986, we were sending telefaxes. We were sending slow scan video. That's how you sell. You, you send video one line at a time. Takes a hundred years <laughs> to see a picture, but it was like magic to us. And so we was doing that. And of course, we were sending text. And text then, oh, I don't know how many years later, became email. As a matter of fact, what we was doing in the Venice Biennale through the expertise of the Black Elk and his friends, I think became the foundation of what's going on here right now today. It became YouTube. That might sound like a highfalutin thing to say, but I believe it's true. Because the Black Elk was communicating with uh, very special people, very knowledgeable people. Roy Ascot was a big name, uh, and he had us thinking all the time. And Robert Adrian was another one of the friends. I met Robert Adrian once. We was talking about security and how security was going to be a big issue and how everybody was going to be worried about their identities and all that kind of stuff. I was very pleased that he thought my ideas was worth something. He's a very nice man, very smart. Well, of course, the Black Elk was very smart, too. And a lot of his, uh, his sensibility came from, from there. He liked William Faulkner and uh, Waylon Jennings and, and, and Janis Joplin and, uh, and stuff like that. And so he was a, a very, very interesting personality. We used to talk about Marshall McLuhan a lot. We was both what you'd call McLuhanites. Now, in 1972-73, Marshall McLuhan, in academic circles, he was not especially well-liked. He was, uh, caused a big furor in the 60s, and by the 70s, academics started trying to pave over what he was saying. Of course, everything that he talked about come true. It, it is a global village, and the medium is the massage. All that stuff came true. They didn't want to hear that in the 70s. But me and the Black Elk, we never gave that, no, uh, never mind, really. We was having a good time uh, putting together things that we called uh, inquiry. We was into inquiry. What was going on? And the Black Elk was very, very good as a social navigator. A social navigator. I'll tell you, sounds a lot like alligator. <laughs> and and uh, But anyway, Bruce was one of them guys that seemed to have a sense of something, uh, that he knowed what was going on when other people don't know it yet. One more little story about the Black Elk. Uh, he showed me a picture by Roy Lichtenstein. It was in his house, but it was it was a Roy before Roy was Roy. It was kind of a charcoal, smudgy-looking thing. I said, Bruce, that doesn't look like your work. He said, you know who did that? I said, no. He said, Roy Lichtenstein did that, and he gave it to me as a gift. I said, I'll be. And he said, I want you to remember something about that, Phil. I said, what is that, Bruce? He said, no matter what you think about that picture, the look of that picture will never be more important than the idea of a gift. I want to thank you for listening to my story, and I'll be moving on now.